Got a new book. Came in yesterday, started reading it tonight. The Marvelous Pigness of Pigs by Joe Salatin. I started to uh, read the introduction, and uh, or the foreword, and I was just amazed at the words that were spoken. That I th- was compelled here to um, to read them out. So anyway, it's written. The foreword is written by Matthew Sleeth, uh, M.D. Uh, he's the founder of Blessed Earth and Creation Care, author, and he writes. I'm a Christian. Jesus is my Lord. Joe Salatin is a Christian. That makes him my brother. But should Joel or someone like him be my farmer? Does it matter who grew my steak or my potatoes? Most Christians don't know how to begin to answer this question. We don't know what the Bible has to say on the subject. We're not have a sermon on the biblical ethic of food. We can't articulate the theology of eating too much of the wrong things or too little of the right. Gluttony is one of the seven deadly sins, and temperance is the cardinal virtue that counteracts it. But how many Christians think about what the Bible says when they walk into a grocery store or a restaurant and cast a vote with their wallet for what they want the world to be like? How many know about the curses placed on Levi and Simeon in Genesis because they maimed a farm animal? How many of us have had a sermon on agriculture, not a reminder about how the Bible is set in an agrarian culture, but agriculture today. This book is a clarion call to connect what you ingest three times a day with what you say you believe in. Like me, Joel believes that the Bible is the inspired word of God, and he looks to the good book rather than corporate America for directions. For many, both inside and outside the church, it will be an eye-opening to find out that there's a sustainable an unchanging farmly, farming ethic to be found in Scripture. But again, wh- one might ask, does it matter who grew my meal? Don't Christians have bigger things to worry about right now? I would answer that the Bible says God will give us great things to look after if we are faithful in the little things. Three quarters of Americans are overweight. Obesity isn't something that happens to us in our sleep. It comes from eating too much or working too little. In religious terms, these issues have been talked about using the terms gluttony and sloth. They are not pretty terms, but ignoring them is literally leading us into large problems. And weight isn't the only problem that comes from bad nutrition and industrial farming. On several occasions, I've asked people in a congregation to raise their hands if someone in their family has had cancer. A sea of hands go up. Then I've asked how many have heard a sermon on cancer. No hands are raised. There's a disconnect between what we're dying from and what we're hearing about in church. The book you're holding connects your faith and your food. It's not just physical health that results from unanchoring ourselves from God's plan for our lives. When all we do is look for the most at the cheapest price, we lose track of the world that can surprise us with its beauty. Joe's vision of the world is alive. It's a picture of wonderment. As he says, one breath gets recycled through an apple tree leaf and then into an earthworm and then into a red clover leaf and then into your teenager. His insights act as an antidote to the increasingly mechanicist world that threatens to reduce the meaning of human life to that of profit and loss. Joel's dream of what our world could be could be seems to be much more in keeping with what I read in Scripture. God could have worked his plan through the builders of ancient Egypt or the scientists of Babylon. Instead, he chose the tribe of Jacob, who traveled with their sheep and cattle. He brought their descendants to farmland and gave them agricultural laws that included rest for the animals. God didn't leave sustainable agriculture to chance for his people. He even gave his nation of farmers ordinances on pruning fruit trees for heaven's sake. Joel asks, and I wonder with him, how did the people of God get so disconnected from God's plan. Jesus wasn't born by accident. He was the most planned baby in history. It is not by chance that the Son of God spent his first night surrounded by farm animals and visited by shepherds. The Bible says that all creation groans as a result of human sin and failings. How appropriate that the baby Jesus should be attended by the creatures he came to restore to the right relationship with us. I visited modern factory farms and I've been to Joel's polyface farm. 
There is no question in my mind which farm is in God's will for us and his creatures. There is no question which offers a picture of dignity and hospitality. If you don't think the Bible has anything to say about food, consider that Adam and Eve ate the wrong thing and it got them thrown out of the garden. Abraham and Sarah were made the parents of many nations because they served strangers a meal. Jesus taught four, five chapters over a meal in the book of John, and then he offered himself as the bread of life. He died and was resurrected, and what he did to calm his disciples and show them he was real was to eat with them. The centerpiece of heaven is a tree of life that yields fruit and heals the nations. My prayer is that this book and Joel's work will bring us one step closer to what we pray to our Father God, that thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. As Joel would say, dear friends, let that be food for thought. Amen. Now that is quite a forward, and I guess it kind of summarizes some of the thoughts we might have here while we're raising our own animals and gardens here. Anyway, hope you enjoyed that forward, and I look forward to uh, getting into this book and uh, learning as much as I can from uh, Joe Salatin and his writings. Take care, and uh, God bless.